Hello guys, my name is Nipun Woods and today we will do further examples related to analysis of algorithm. Now as you can see in our first example that there is a main function and then there is a for loop which is running from i equals to 1 to i square less than or equals to n. Okay. Now as you can see that the condition given in this program is a little bit different from the normal one which is saying that i square should be less than or equals to n. Now to make it simple, we will take the square to the other side and it will become i less than or equals to root n. So that's why the time complexity of this algorithm will be order of root n. Now just keep that in mind that we always try to find the answer in terms of n. Okay. Now in the next example you can see that there is a main function and then there are two variables i and s which are initially declared as 1 and then there is a while loop in which there is a condition given which is saying s should be less than or equals to n. Then i is incrementing by 1 and s is incrementing in terms of i which is nothing but s is equals to s plus i. Then there is a print function which is saying print hello. Now initially we can see that both s and i are 1. Okay. Now for the second value of i which is nothing but 2 because 1 plus 1 is nothing but 2 then the second value of s will be s plus i which is nothing but the sum of first two natural number so we will get 3 okay the sum of four, sum of first two natural number is nothing but 3 so the third value of i will be 3 and the third value of s is nothing but the sum of first three natural number which is nothing but 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 6 so this series will keep on going and we can conclude that S series is nothing but the sum of first n natural number. Now the question is that when will this loop will going to stop? Well this loop will stop when the value of S will be greater than n. Or we can say that the sum of first n natural number should be greater than n. And the formula for the sum of first n natural number we all know that is equal to k into k plus 1 divided by 2 should be greater than n. Now if we expand this equation then we will get then we will get k square divided by 2 plus k divided by 2 should be greater than n. Now in this polynomial equation the biggest value is nothing but the k square so we will put it equal to n. Now as I told you guys before that we always try to find the answer in terms of n so that's why we will take the square to the other side and it will become k is equals to root n. So that's why the time complexity of this algorithm will be order of root n. Now in the next example you can see that there is a main function and then there is a for loop which is running from i equals to 1 to i less than or equals to n. Then there is an incrementation condition which is saying that i is equals to i into 2 and then there is a print function which is saying hello. Now as you can see that the incrementation condition is saying that i should be i is equals to i into 2 so that's why i is incrementing in terms of power of 2 so the first value will be 1 next will be 2 next will be 4 next will be 8 then 16 then 32 then 64 and up to so on plus up to so on up to 2 power k now to find the time complexity of this algorithm what we will do we will put 2 power k equals to n why because the total terms in the i will be n so that's why we will put it equal to n now to find the answer in terms of n what we will do we will take log both sides so it will become k equals to log n base 2 so that's why the time complexity of this algorithm will be log n base 2 or you can say log n now in the next example you can see that there is a for loop which is running from i equals to n by 2 to i less than or equals to n so that's why this loop will run n by 2 times. Now the next loop is running from j equals to n by 2 to j equals to n. So that's why this loop is also running n by 2 times or you can say n times. Now the third loop. This loop is running from k equals to 1 <coughs> sorry k equals to 1 to k less than or equals to n. And the incrementation condition is saying that k is equals to k into 2 which is similar to the previous question. Now from the previous question we have learned when this type of loop is coming then this loop 
then this type of loop is running log in time. So we can conclude that to find the time complexity of this algorithm, we just have to multiply all these values. So we will get n into 2, n by 2 into n by 2 into log n. So the time complexity would be order of n square log n. So if you do the next example, you can see that there is a main function and then there is a for loop which is running from n by 2, i equals to n by 2 to i less than or equals to n. Then there is a normal implementation i plus plus. So this loop is running n by 2 times or you can say n times. Then there is a for loop which is in which it is running from j equals to 1 to j less than or equals to n by 2. And the implementation condition is saying that j is equals to j plus i. Now from this, now and if we try to analyze this problem, and so we can conclude that for the first value of i which is nothing but n, which is nothing but 1, the j will run n times because it is dependent upon the i. So that's why j plus plus it will be the normal implementation. So that's why this j loop will run n times. Now for the next value of i which is nothing but 2, j value will be j will run n by 2 times. Why? Because j is incrementing in terms of i. So for the next value of i which is nothing but 3, j will run n by 3 times. Now as this now for the last value of i which is nothing but i equals to n j will run one times why because n by n is nothing but one so if we add all these values to find the time complexity and take the n common out then we will get n into one plus one by two plus one by three plus one by four plus and up to so on plus one by n now this whole series is nothing but the log n series so we will get n into log n. So that's why the time complexity of this algorithm would be order of n log n. Now as you can see in our next example that there are two variables i and j. Then there is a variable n which is equal to 2 to the power of 2 to the power of k. Then there is a for loop which is running from i equals to n to i less than or equals to n. Oh sorry. In here, I want to correct you guys that this is not equals to n, this is equals to 1. So i will be equals to 1 and the condition given is i less than or equals to n. So that's why this loop will run n times. This is not n, this is 1. This, this thing is not n, this is 1. So in the next, it is saying that j is equals to 2 and in the while loop, there is a condition given which is saying j should be less than or equals to n. Then j is equals to j square and then there is a print function which is saying print hello. Now for the value of k, for the first value of k which is nothing but k equals to 1, <coughs> sorry, n will be 4. Why? Because of this formula. If we put the value of k is equals to 1, then we will get n equals to 4. Now for the value of n equals to 4, j will run 2 times. Why? Because the two values for the for which the this condition, this while condition will satisfy will be 2 and 4 only. So that's why j will run 2 times. And this whole program, this whole program will run n times because of this for loop. Because this for loop is running n times. So for the value of k equals to 1, this whole program will run n into 2 times. Now for the next value of k which is nothing but k equals to 2, n will be 16 because of that formula. And for the n will be for the value of n equals to 16, j will run 3 times and the whole program will run n into 3 times. Now for the value of k equals to 3, n will be 2 to the power of 8 and j will run 4 times and the whole program will run n into 4 times. Now we can conclude that for then we can conclude that whenever the value of k suppose that k when 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 the value of k is equals to 1 then the whole program is running n into 2 times when the value of k equals to 2 then the whole program is running n into 3 times and when the value of k equals to 3 then the whole program is running n into 4 times so we can conclude that n 
into k plus 1 will be our first equation. Now, to find the value of k, we will use this formula. Okay. Now, to find the value of k, we will take log both sides two times. So, that's why it will become k equals to log log n. So, we will put this value into this equation. And we will get n into log log n plus 1. So, if we try to, uh, and then we will, then we will find the time complexity of this algorithm, which is nothing but, which will be nothing but order of n log log n. So, this will be our time complexity for this algorithm. So, this is enough for this video. And from the next video, I will do comparison of function so that you, so that it will help you guys to solve recursive equations and recursive problems which will be master theorem or substitution method or tree method or whatever the methods will be so thank you guys for watching have a nice day